Hey! We frequently work with complex arrays of objects, and often each property of each object in the array must be separately validated. In my prior video, we walked through how to create and validate a simple array of strings. In this video, we focus on validating more complex repeating fields using arrays of objects. Along the way, we leverage many signal form validation features. Let's jump in. I'm in VS Code with my Star Wars Vehicle Sales application open. We're looking at the interfaces and validation for a user profile form. The list of social links is currently defined as an array of URL strings. Let's change that to an array of objects for more complex repeated fields. If you'd like to walk through how to create this file from scratch, check out my prior video, Angular Signal Forms, Working with Arrays. This is our current form. This set of social links is an array of URL strings. And this is what we'll build. Each social link includes the URL, the name of the platform, and the year the user joined that platform. Going back to the code, Start by building an interface for the social profile link. We'll define the link URL, platform name, and member since year. We could define the year as a number, but that makes it a bit more challenging to have a default value. We don't really want zero, so we defined it as a string so it can default to an empty string. Next, we change the user profile interface social links array from string to an array of profile link. And let's define a constant for an initially empty profile link. This isn't really a requirement, but could be helpful. We'll set each of the initial property values to an empty string. And now we have our array of objects for our repeating fields, and a constant we can use to add an empty object to our array. Let's look at the form again and define our validation rules. If the user adds a link, the URL for that link is required. The string must be a valid URL. Let's make the platform name only required if a URL is entered. For the year, we'll set them in to 1990. That should be safe. Set the max to the current year. And let's ensure that the year is four numeric digits. OK, that's our plan. Going back to the code and scroll down, Let's define a schema specifically for our repeating fields. This keeps the array validation together and separate from the other validation on the form. I'll create a constant, links schema. Call the schema function. Specify the profile link interface as the generic argument. Then pass in an arrow function. The arrow function gets the field path and returns an object with our validation rules. Our first rule is that the URL is required if the user adds a social link. We already have that rule defined here. Let's cut it and paste it here. Then change the first argument to path.linkURL to reference the array object property. Same with our second validation rule. The string must be a valid URL. Cut it from here, and paste it here. Change the first argument to path.linkURL. We want the string to be a valid URL, so we call the URL validation function we created in my prior video. Then in the user profile schema, we change the apply each to apply all of these rules, remove the arrow function, and pass in our links schema. Now the form validation validates the first name and our array of social link objects. But we have more validation rules to define. The next rule is to make the platform name required, but only if a URL is entered. For that, we'll call the required function, specify path.platform, and add a validation message. Since we only want this field to be required, when a URL is entered, we'll add a WHEN clause. I covered the WHEN clause in my video, Angular Signal Forms Conditional Validation. We set the WHEN clause to an arrow function. 
That arrow function takes in a context object and returns a Boolean. Here we'll use the context object value of function to get the value of the URL. Notice the syntax error here. The when expression is expecting a Boolean, not truthy. Use the Boolean constructor to turn the truthy into a Boolean value. Now the platform name is only required when the URL is entered. Slick! We define three rules for validating the membership year. Call the min function, define the path to our field, then specify the minimum year. Since social media as it is today wasn't a thing much before 1990, we'll set that as our minimum year. And I'll add a validation error message. Use the max function to set the maximum value, again to find the path to our field. For the maximum year, let's use the current year. We get that by creating a date object and calling its getFullYear method. And let's not forget to add a validation message. Note that this creates a new date object every time the field is validated. Let's instead define a constant for that current year and use that constant here instead. Our last rule specifies that the year must be four digits. For that, we use the built-in pattern validation function that ensures the entered value matches a defined regular expression pattern. Call the pattern function, pass in the path, then specify the desired pattern. We want the pattern to begin at the beginning, so hat to anchor the start of the string. We want a single digit, so backslash d. We want to repeat the prior token four times, so curly braces four. This essentially defines four single digits. The string should end after the four digits, so a dollar sign to anchor the end of the string. And I'll add a message. Wow! Now we have everything we need to validate the properties of our object. And the apply each applies these validation rules to each set of repeated fields, validating all of the objects in our array. With our schema changes in place, let's move on to our component. First, note that in Angular version 21.0.7, the Angular team changed the field directive name to form field. Field still works for the time being, but we'll use the updated name. Scrolling down, the add social link method currently has a syntax error. Now that our array contains objects, we can't just add an empty string to the array. We need to add an initialized profile link object. We'll use the initial link constant we created earlier and spread it to copy an empty object to the array. We don't have to change the remove social link method since it removes by index. Our next step is to modify the template. We bind our HTML input elements to the appropriate fields of our signal form. And notice that I've changed the field directive to form field on each of the original input elements. Scrolling down to the social links, here is our for loop that creates our repeating fields. Now that the array contains an object, change the binding for the URL to access the appropriate object property, dot link URL. I'll add the form field for the platform input and bind it to the form field, user profile form, dot social links. Since this is our array, we reference the repeating field array element using dollar $index, then dot platform. We do the same for the member since year. Each repeated input element now binds to the associated property of the object in the array. Scrolling down, here is the validation message logic for each of the three object properties. For the link, I'll add dot link URL to reference the specific field. For the platform, dot platform. Notice that the platform field validation message will appear if the field is invalid and the link field is touched. That way, any validation message will appear even if the user does not touch the platform input element. Lastly, I'll add dot member since year. That should do it. Let's try out our validation rules. Bring up the browser and add a social link. Touch the URL field then leave the field. 
and we see our required and URL validation messages. Enter an invalid URL. Now we see our URL validation message and our platform message. Our when clause defines that the platform is required when there is a URL specified, even if that URL is not valid. Enter a valid URL, and the URL validation message is gone, but not the platform message. Enter a platform name, and our platform validation message is gone. So far, so good. Let's try out the year. It's not required, so no message yet. Enter zero for the year, leave the field, and we see our min and pattern validation messages. Enter 2050, and we see the max validation message. Enter the current year, and we see no more messages. Our validation works, yay! Use these techniques with signal forms to validate repeating fields defined as an array of objects. But note, as of this recording, signal forms is experimental and could change before it becomes a stable part of Angular. What do you think of these techniques? Drop a comment below with your thoughts or questions. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful, please like and subscribe.